Hello and good day. For today, let us continue the general provisions of obligations. Last time, I have discussed the part one of general provisions of obligations. Sa part one, diniscuss ko yung definition ng obligation. Ang definition ng obligation ay nakastate sa Article 1156 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. Aside from the definition of obligation, diniscuss ko din yung requisites of obligation or the essential elements of obligation. And of course, yung distinction ng natural obligation at civil obligation. Let us now proceed to Article 1157 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. Article 1157 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines states that obligations arise from first, law, second, contracts, third, quasi-contracts, fourth, acts or omissions punished by law, and fifth, quasi-delicts. Article 1157 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines simply talks about the sources of obligation. Actually, nabanggit ko na to dun sa first part ng general provisions of obligations at ang sources of obligations ay una, law, pangalawa, contracts, pangatlo, quasi-contracts, pangapat, acts or omissions punishable by law, and panglima, quasi-delicts. Ang ibig sabihin lang ng Article 1157 ay merong obligation kasi merong pinanggagalingan. That means merong obligation kasi merong batas na nagsasabing mayroong obligation. Merong obligation kasi merong kontrata, may obligation kasi merong quasi-contracts, may obligation kasi merong acts or omissions punishable by law, at merong obligation kasi merong quasi-delics. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng sources of obligation. Take note na ang ginamit ko sa fourth source of obligation ay acts or omissions punishable by law. Ang nakastate doon sa Article 1157 ng New Civil Code of the Philippines ay yung word na punished. But for academic purposes, we will use the word punishable. I will explain the different sources of obligation one by one. Let's start with the first source of obligation and that is law. Law is defined as a rule of conduct, just and obligatory, laid down by legitimate authority for common observance and benefit. It says here that law is a rule of conduct. Basically, a law is a rule of conduct because it guides us to action. If there is a law, there is something to follow. Kung may batas, meron tayong susundin. At kung meron tayong susundin, alam natin kung ano ang dapat gawin at kung ano ang dapat hindi gawin. That is, why law a rule of conduct? Again, a law is a rule of conduct because it guides us to action. Another is that law is just and obligatory. Kapag sinabing just, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay fair or equal. That means, the treatment of law is equal or the treatment of law should be equal. Regardless kung anuman ang religion mo, regardless kung anuman ang sex mo, regardless kung anuman ang color mo, regardless kung anuman ang race mo, regardless kung anuman ang age mo, or regardless kung anuman ang status mo in life, the treatment of the law should always be equal. Kapag sinabi namang obligatory, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay required or compulsory. That means law should be observed and followed. To follow the law, there must be an equivalent punishment or penalty in order for them to be enforced. 
Another thing is that law is laid down by legitimate authority for common observance and benefit. In other words, a law is enacted or created in order for it to be observed. A law is created and enacted in order for it to be followed. Of course, kung hindi sinunod ang law, there should be an equivalent punishment or penalty. That is basically the meaning of law. What are some examples of law? One example of law is the National Internal Revenue Code or NIRC. This National Internal Revenue Code or NIRC provides for the payment of taxes. Merong obligation na magbayad ng tax kasi merong law na nagsasabing dapat na magbayad ng tax. And that law is the National Internal Revenue Code or NIRC. Another example is the Family Code of the Philippines. The Family Code of the Philippines provides the obligation to support one's family. In other words, my obligation na mag-support ng yung family because there is a law that says there is an obligation to support one's family. And that obligation to support one's family is under the Family Code of the Philippines. Those are just some of the examples of law. The second source of obligation is contracts. A contract is a meeting of minds between two persons whereby one binds himself with respect to the other to give something or to render some service. This definition of contract can be found in Article 1305 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. It says here that a contract is a meeting of minds. Kapag sinabing meeting of minds, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay may agreement ang dalawang parties or dalawang tao na involved sa contract. And at the same time, kapag sinabing meeting of minds, merong offer at acceptance. Take note that in a contract, one party has the obligation to give something or to render some service. Let me give you some examples of a contract. One example of a contract is a contract of lease. A contract of lease provides for the payment of rental by the lessee. Sa contract of lease, merong dalawang parties. At yung two parties na yon ay lessor at lessee. Si lessor, siya ang may-ari ng property. He is the owner of the property. Siya ang nagpaparenta ng property. Si Lessie naman, siya ang nag doon sa property ni Lessor. Again, si Lessor, siya ang may-ari ng property na pinaparenta. Si Lessie naman, siya ang nag ng property ni Lessor. Dahil si Lessie ang nag ng property ni Lessor, Merong obligation si Lessie na magbayad ng renta. Another example of a contract is a contract of sale. A contract of sale requires the seller to deliver the thing sold and the buyer to pay the price. Of course, sa contract of sale, merong dalawang parties. At yung dalawang parties na yon ay ang seller at ang buyer. Of course, the obligation of the seller is to deliver the thing sold and the obligation of the buyer is to pay the price of the thing sold. Those are just some examples of contract.
The third source of obligation is quasi-conscious. Yung word or term na quasi, that is actually a Latin term, which means as if. Kapag sinabing quasi-conscious, they refer to certain lawful, voluntary, and unilateral acts, giving rise to a juridical relation to the end that no one shall be unjustly enriched at the expense of another. It says here that quasi-contracts are certain lawful acts. Lawful acts, ang ibig sabihin niyan, the acts are legal. They are not contrary to law. Voluntary acts. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, hindi punersa yung isang tao para gawin yung isang bagay. The person is not forced to perform the act. At unilateral acts, recall that uni means one. In other words, in unilateral acts, there is only one person who is required to perform the act. Ang quasi-contracts kasi nakabase yan sa principle na no one shall be unjustly enriched at the expense of another. Meaning to say, there is an unjust enrichment. At paano natin masasabi na merong unjust enrichment? Masasabi natin na merong unjust enrichment when a person unjustly retains a benefit to the loss of another, or when a person retains money or property of another against the fundamental principles of justice, equity, and good conscience. Nagretain ng benefit yung isang tao, pero yung isang tao naman ay nagsuffer ng loss. One person unjustly retains a benefit, but the other person suffers a loss. Or yung isang tao nagretain ng money or property na hindi naman sa kanya. That is basically the meaning of unjust enrichment. Again, quasi-contracts are based on the principle that no one shall be unjustly enriched at the expense of another. Examples of quasi-contracts are negotiorum gesture and solutio indebiti. I will discuss these examples one by one. Negosorum gesture. Negosorum gesture refers to the voluntary administration of the property, business, or affairs of another without his consent or authority. In other words, kapag sinabing negosorum gesture, ito yung voluntary management ng property, business, or affairs ng ibang tao. And take note, in negosorum gesture, the voluntary administration is without the consent or authority of the owner of the property, business, or affairs. It creates the obligation to reimburse the gestor for necessary and useful expenses. Si gestor, siya yung taong nagmanage ng property, business, or affairs ng ibang tao. In Spanish, gestor. In English, manager. Si gestor kasi sa pag-manage niya ng property, business, or affairs ng ibang tao, magkakaroon siya ng expenses. Gagastos ang gestor. At dahil gumastos ang gestor sa pag-manage ng property, business, or affairs ng ibang tao, Merong obligation ang owner ng property, business, or affairs na bayaran kung anuman ang ginastos ni gestor. That is basically the meaning of negosorum gesture. Let me give you an example of negosorum gesture. D and C are the owners of adjacent vegetable farms. One day, D was not around to tend to his farm. 
When C noticed that D had not been around for almost a week, he himself cultivated the soil and placed fertilizer on it, watered the plants, removed the weeds, and wilted leaves. C incurred necessary and useful expenses in the process. Here in this example, there is a voluntary administration of the property. Merong voluntary administration of the property dito kasi nga, hindi naman sinabi ni D na i-manage ni C ang farm. Yun nga lang na-observe ni C na wala na si D for almost a week. That's why nag-volunteer siya na i-manage yung farm. Now, si C, siya ang tinatawag na gestor. At sinabi dito sa example na nagkaroon ng necessary and useful expenses in the process, si C. At dahil nagkaroon ng necessary and useful expenses, si C, kailangan bayaran ni D, si C, for such necessary and useful expenses. D must reimburse C for such expenses. Otherwise, he will be unjustly enriching himself at C's expense. Recall that quasi-contracts are based on the principle that no one shall be unjustly enriched at the expense of another. For additional information, there is no negotiorum gesture in either of these instances. A. When the property or business is not neglected or abandoned. B. If in fact, the manager has been tacitly authorized by the owner. Doon sa ating example kanina, merong neglect on the part of the owner. Kasi almost one week na siyang wala. At doon sa one week na yon, pwede nang masira yung mga vegetables. At yung manager or yung gestor doon sa ating example ay hindi inauthorize ng owner na i-manage ang kanyang property or farm. Take note, doon sa ating example kanina, hindi niya vinayulate itong A at B. Hindi niya vinayulate yung A at hindi niya vinayulate yung B. Therefore, the example that I gave a while ago is an example of a negosorum gesture. Again, there is no negosorum gesture in either of these instances when the property or business is not neglected or abandoned and if in fact the manager has been tacitly authorized by the owner. Next, solution in debiti. This refers to payment by mistake of an obligation which was not due when paid. It creates the obligation to return the payment. In other words, if something is received when there is no right to demand it and it was unduly delivered through mistake, the obligation to return it arises. Ang ibig sabihin lang yan, kung yung isang tao ay nakareceive ng payment by mistake, meron siyang obligation para i-return yung payment by mistake. This is a quasi-contract kasi nga, di ba, sa quasi-contract, it is based on the principle that no one shall be unjustly enriched at the expense of another. Yung makakareceive ng payment, he will unjustly enrich himself. He will retain the benefit. Therefore, there is an unjust enrichment. At kung sino man yung magbabayad by mistake, siya ang magsasuffer ng loss. Let me give you an example of solution in debity. D. The payee of check for 5,000 pesos cashes it with the Joey Bank. But the teller gives him 6,000 pesos by mistake. Ang dapat lang na ma-encash ni D ay 5,000 pesos. Pero ang binigay ng teller ay 6,000 pesos by mistake. Therefore, sobra ng 1,000 pesos yung binigay ng teller kay D. 
Of course, here, merong obligation si D na i-return yung 1,000 pesos kay teller. D is duty-bound to return the excess of 1,000 pesos to the bank. Otherwise, he will be unjustly enriching himself at the bank's expense. Mag-retain ng benefit si D. Pero si bank, magsasuffer siya ng loss. That's why there is an unjust enrichment here. Merong obligation si D na ibalik yung 1,000 pesos na sobra. Kasi ang binigay ng teller ay 6,000. Ang dapat lang na ma cash ni D ay 5,000 pesos. Sobra ng 1,000. Now, D is duty-bound to return the excess of 1,000 pesos to the bank. That is basically the solucio in debiti or payment by mistake. The fourth source of obligation is acts or omissions punishable by law. Acts or omissions punishable by law ay tinatawag din na delics. Kapag sinabi natin acts or omissions punishable by law, ang ibig sabihin lang yan ay krimen. These are crimes or felonies. The commission of a crime makes the offender civilly liable. In other words, every person criminally liable for a crime or felony is also civilly liable. Ang ibig sabihin lang yan, kung ikaw ay gumawa ng krimen, meron kang criminal liabilities. And aside from the criminal liabilities, meron ka ding civil liabilities. And what are the civil liabilities in delics? The civil liabilities in delics are restitution, reparation of the damage cost, and indemnification for consequential damages. In restitution, the thing itself shall be restored even though it be found in the possession of a third person who has acquired it by lawful means, saving it to the latter, his action, against the proper person who may be liable to him. In reparation of the damage caused, the court shall determine the amount of damage, taking into consideration the price of the thing, whenever possible, and its special sentimental value to the injured party. And reparation shall be made accordingly. Indemnification for consequential damages shall include not only those caused the injured party, but also those suffered by his family or by a third person by reason of the crime. In order for you to better understand the civil liabilities, let me give you an example. If D steals the carabao of C, this civil liability consists of, first, returning the carabao. Yan yung tinatawag na restitution. Kasi i-restore -re yung thing itself. Pangalawa, paying for its value if he cannot return it. Kung hindi niya maibabalik yung carabao mismo, magbabayad siya ng value ng carabao. Or, babayaran niya yung value ng karabaw. Ito na yung sinasabi na reparation of the damage cost. At pangatlo, indemnifying the consequential damages suffered not only by C, but also those of his family or by a third person by reason of the crime. Ito na yung sinasabi natin na indemnification for consequential damages. Of course, this will be in addition to any prison term or other penalty that may be imposed upon him by the court. Ito naman yung sinasabi natin na criminal liability. Again, kung ang isang tao ay gumawa ng krimen, meron siyang criminal liability. And aside from criminal liability, meron din siyang civil liability. Every person criminally liable for a crime or felony is also civilly liable. The fifth source of obligation is quasi-delics. 
Quasi delict is also known as quasi ex delicto. This is the equivalent of the term tort in Anglo American law. It is also known as culpa aquil ian. Quasi delicts are acts or omissions that cause damage to another there being fault or negligence, but without any pre-existing contractual relation between the parties. Sa quasi delics, merong fault or negligence, pero walang pre-existing contractual relation between the parties. Merong tatlong elements ng negligence. The elements of negligence are, first, the fault or negligence of the defendant, second, the damage suffered or incurred by the plaintiff, and third, the relation of cause and effect between the fault or negligence of the defendant and the damage incurred by the plaintiff. Ang unang element ay fault or negligence of the defendant. Sino ba si defendant? The defendant is the person sued in a civil proceeding. In other words, he is the person who will be required to answer the complaint in the court. On the other hand, the plaintiff is the party who brings a civil suit in a court of law. In other words, he is the person who files the complaint in the court. Sa madaling salita, si plaintiff siya yung complainant. Siya ang nag-file ng case sa Korte. At si defendant naman siya yung kinasuhan. Again, the plaintiff is the party who brings a civil suit in a court of law and the defendant is the person sued in civil proceeding. Ang pangalawang element ng negligence ay the damage suffered or incurred by the plaintiff at ang pangatlong element ng negligence ay the relation of cause and effect between the fault or negligence of the defendant and the damage incurred by the plaintiff. In order for you to understand this better, magbibigay ako ng example. If a person, while cleaning his window, causes a flower pot to fall through his negligence, thereby injuring someone passing by, the former is liable for damages to the latter. Take note, yung tinutukoy na former dito ay yung naglilinis. At yung latter, siya yung na-injured. This is an example of quasi delix kasi nga, the act or omission causes damages or causes damage to another. Kasi nga, di ba, na-injure yung dumadaan. Meron ding fault or negligence yung naglilinis. And at the same time, walang pre-existing contractual relation between the person who is cleaning and the person who is passing by. Now, because na-injure yung person na dumadaan because of the negligence of the person who is cleaning the window, the person who is cleaning the window is liable for damages to the latter. Or, the person who is cleaning the window is liable for damages to the person who is injured. That is basically quasi delix. Next, let's proceed to Article 1158 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. Article 1158 provides that obligations derived from law are not presumed. Only those expressly determined in this code or in a special laws are demandable and shall be regulated by the precepts of the law which establishes them and as to what has not been foreseen by the provisions of this book. It says here in Article 1158 that obligations derived from law are not presumed, meaning to say, Yung obligations derived from law are not assumed. Kasi ang ibig sabihin ng presumed, assumed. Dapat expressly determined or expressly stated siya sa Civil Code of the Philippines or in 
special laws. Yun lang naman ang sinasabi sa Article 1158. Next, Article 1159. Article 1159 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines states that obligations arising from contracts have the force of law between the contracting parties and should be complied with in good faith. Ang ibig sabihin nitong Article 1159 ay malayang mag-usap ang dalawang parties sa contract. Malaya silang mag-usap regarding their duties and obligations at malaya silang magkaroon ng agreement. But take note, their agreement should not be contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy. Aside from that, the agreement entered into between the said parties must be respected and given the force of law between them. As long as their agreement is not contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy, their agreement must be respected and there is a force of law between those parties. Let's now proceed to Article 1160, Article 1161, and Article 1162 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. Article 1160 states that obligations derived from quasi-contracts shall be subject to the provisions of Chapter 1, Title 17 of this book. Article 1161 provides that civil obligations arising from criminal offenses shall be governed by the penal laws subject to the provisions of Article 2177 and of the pertinent provisions of Chapter 2, Preliminary Title on Human Relations and of Title 18 of this book, Regulating Damages. And Article 1162 states that obligations derived from quasi-delics shall be governed by the provisions of Chapter 2, Title 17 of this book, and by special laws. Actually, there is nothing to expound in these articles because sinasabi lang dito sa articles na to, Article 1160, 61, and 62, yung mga articles of laws or provisions regulating or governing the obligations from quasi-contracts, obligations from criminal offenses, and obligations from quasi-delics. That means, for obligations from quasi-contracts, refer to Chapter 1, Title 17 of the Civil Code of the Philippines. For obligations from criminal offenses, refer to the penal laws subject to the provisions of Article 2177 and the pertinent provisions of Chapter 2, Preliminary Title on Human Relations and Title 18 of the Civil Code of the Philippines Regulating Damages. And for obligations from quasi delics refer to Chapter 2, Title 17 of the Civil Code of the Philippines and by special laws. And that ends the discussion in general provisions of obligations.